Good morning, everybody. My name is Rosemary Eager of Scotland. Welcome to the Southern South Aiken Presbyterian Church and especially to our annual Gifts of Women's Sunday. Welcome any visitors. You can talk to any one of our members if you have any questions and to Pastor Jason, who is still enjoying his family. But we have Katie here to uh, assist us. We have registrar books in the pews. Please feel free to complete them. Fill in your name and address and a phone number if you would like one of us to contact you. We would appreciate that. We have some announcements this morning. Uh, there will be a deacon's meeting after church in the library for those that wish to attend. We also have Today after church, please take a moment to visit outside of our Life Center Gymnasium. And there's a table in the hallway. You will see that there are books in boxes and paper bags on the table and on the floor, which are free to give away. So please come, take a book and build your library. And we also have um, congratulations to Alex and Corinna on the birth of Evelyn Awe McGee. Congratulations to all of them. God has blessed them with a the little girl. We also have an announcement from the Kim Ward family. Little Delilah Ward, who is present with us today, she's sitting in front of us, celebrated her second birthday yesterday. God bless her. She has had numerous surgeries. She was a preemie. And uh, she's alive and well yesterday and today on her second birthday. And every single prayer from this community is appreciated by the family. And those prayers were filled with love and celebration and Wish little Delilah Ward a happy birthday. Are there any other announcements that anyone would like to make? Happy birthday, Delilah. Let us have a call to worship. All who are able, please stand and join me in a call to worship. Once again, please stand if you're able. The call to worship. I will bless the Lord at all times. God Praise shall come. come. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let, Let the humble hear and be glad. glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And Let us exalt. 
I sought the Lord and was answered. God delivered me from all my fears. The angel of the Lord encamps. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in God. Depart from evil and do good. Seek, Seek peace, peace and pursue it. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our thoughts. See if there is hurtful way in us, and lead us in the way everlasting. We know we have all sinned and come short of God's glory. Please join me in the prayer of confession, followed by a moment of silence to confess your personal sins. Loving God, we confess that we criticize and pass judgment on others. We have sought to control the way they live their lives in service to you. Forgive us for our short-sightedness and sin. Help us to understand, appreciate, and love our siblings in Christ who have diverse circumstances and life challenges. Help us to recognize the variety of ways we can express faithfulness and love to you. And all God's people said, Amen. Hear the good news, believers. Beloved in Christ, 
you who are blessed by God to inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you are refashioned every day to live according to God's reign in the freedom of Christ Jesus. Friends, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. As the water is poured into the font, remember that God claims you in baptism through faith. Let us walk by the spirit of the living God. The passing of the peace gives us a chance to share signs of peace with our neighbors. The peace of Christ be with you. Good morning. Are you ever so excited? You just can't even keep it inside. You want to jump for joy and sing and dance, a little happy dance. I know you do, Delilah, right? We get to hear your excitement. So, you have something in your shoe? We can fix that. So, in our Bible story today, we hear about a time that Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth was much older, and she was pregnant with John the Baptist. After Mary received the good news that she was going to have baby Jesus, she went and visited Elizabeth for a little while. When Mary came in, Elizabeth felt her baby jump for joy. Even though she wasn't born yet, he was so excited and jumped for joy because he recognized that Jesus was near him. Elizabeth understood that something incredible was happening. And in response, Mary sang a special song to God because she was just so excited. So in this story, we hear a lot of happy news. We hear joyful reactions, and we hear that John leapt, Elizabeth shouted, Mary sang, and they all gave praise to God for the amazing things that he was doing. So let me ask you. Are amazing things still happening today? Yeah. Do amazing things happen in our life? Yes. So can we jump and shout and get super excited about the things that God is doing in our life? Yeah, we can. All the things that we do. 
when we sing, when we dance, when we go to sports, all of those are opportunities for us to shout our joy for Jesus. Will you say a prayer with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. Help us to praise you for all the things you do. And give glory to you as we use our talents. Amen. gift this choir is to this community. Let's turn to God in prayer. Lord, let your spirit guide the words read 
proclaimed and heard this day. May your abundant grace fill our hearts as we hear your good news and share it with the world around us. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. Hear now the word of the Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit in your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. Hear what the Spirit of God says to the church. Thanks be to God. So this morning's sermon starts with a little bit of congregational participation, but don't panic. You don't need to stand up. You don't have to say anything out loud. We're just going to take a few deep breaths together. So take your hands and place them on your stomach. And take a deep breath in and let it out slowly. Did your shoulders relax? Did you feel the movement? Maybe you readjusted in your seat a little bit, or maybe the pew underneath you creaked just a smidge. This time, we're gonna do it once more, but focus on the air filling within your stomach. So deep breath in and out. Now hear this word, koilia. In the gospel reading this morning, Elizabeth shares this word with her young cousin, Mary. She says, for as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my koilia leaped for joy. This Greek word, koilia, is often used in scripture to mean belly or womb or stomach. While it often describes a location in the body, it is also tied to the source of life and feelings and our emotions. And biblical scholars will tell you time and time again that often Greek and Hebrew words never mean just one thing. That one word can hold a full paragraph of meaning. And I think that's what we experience here. So Elizabeth is surprised by Mary's presence in her home. Mary's voice breaks through the silence and startles Elizabeth from her daily life and routine of quiet. Elizabeth's home has been silent for quite some time because her husband has been unable to speak. So Elizabeth has been living in a home filled with only the sounds of her thoughts and prayers. And she's preparing to give birth to who she does not know yet. So when the voice of Mary is heard, Elizabeth's body responds. The Holy Spirit moves within her. The center of her being is moved by the voice and presence of her cousin in her home. Elizabeth is aware of the story that's unfolding before her. She knows of the prophets and understands the voices of angels. So she does not hesitate to greet Mary as the mother of God. So this isn't just a casual conversation between two cousins. This is more than two wis women visiting before their pregnancy is completed. These two women are pregnant because of divine intervention. So this interaction told in scripture between cousins is a full body response to the power of God. Friends, this is what I like to call a biblical gut feeling. And maybe you've experienced a gut feeling response before. Or maybe you've heard loved ones describe it in great detail, or maybe the concept has come up in your favorite book or movie. Or maybe you've studied the Enneagram and are thinking about the gut triad, where numbers eight, nine, and one tend to make major decisions based off their gut feelings. And for me, having a strong gut feeling runs in my family. My grandfather had a gut that you could take to the bank. He would meet somebody, shake their hand, and immediately be able to tell you if they were trustworthy. 
and I knew if Grandpa trusted someone, it was in my best interest to follow suit. And if Grandpa didn't trust someone, well, that wasn't really up for discussion. Questioning anything deemed appropriate was not a practice my family participated in. His gut feelings led him to do things like buy a family ranch with his best friend, so his kids and grandkids had a little slice of heaven in the Texas Hill Country. His gut feeling often had us leaving at least 30 minutes early on any road trip to be prepared for the unexpected. And his gut feeling told him to sell his boat trailer for about 50 pounds of fresh fish, much to the dismay of my grandmother and the room in her freezer. And his gut feeling called him to get all of his ducks in a row, quietly in the last few months before he passed away. While his death was sudden to us and his family was shocked, I have this gut feeling he knew it was coming and knew he needed to prepare. And I need to be honest though, it took some time for me to learn to trust my gut feeling, to truly understand that that pit in my stomach was saying something. But over time, I learned that in the center of my being, in my stomach, it held all of these emotions that I sometimes cannot express. I learned that the things that cause my stomach to do backflips often mean that I am on the verge of a life change. My gut told me to move to Scotland for a year of service, and there I experienced all of the self-growth. My gut also told me that my call to ministry was not going away. So here I stand preaching in a town I did not know existed a year ago, in a state I had never visited a year ago. And I feel God in this place and see familiar faces now. These feelings that exist inside of me are products of the Holy Spirit, calling me to trust in God, the divine being who created every piece of me. These Holy Spirit gut feelings cause me to move in unexpected and life-changing ways. And I would be willing to bet that your gut has been the same guidepost for you. You've said yes to big and little life changes. You've maybe started or ended relationships. You've accepted jobs or moved somewhere new and a little scary. And you've trusted what your body is telling you feels right and you've res responded accordingly. Now, I have never been pregnant, and truthfully, it's experience that I doubt um, I want to experience, but maybe you have, and maybe you haven't been pregnant. And I don't think pregnancy is what relates us to the story. That's not where the humanity is. We connect with Elizabeth in the story and her ability to listen to her gut feeling. She has this gut feeling that the world is about to be flipped on its head. She names this particular and holy moment. She acknowledges God's presence in the room. And she shares a blessing with her dear cousin, Mary. She doesn't question her gut feeling. She leans into it. Her emotions well up and feel like movement within her womb, and her response is to bless Mary. To say, Mary, I know this whole storyline seems wildly out of the ordinary, but Mary, your testament to live out God's plan is extraordinary. Mary, your life is a blessing. Remember, Elizabeth refers to Mary as the mother of God. She knows of the life being created in the, her womb. And she specifically recognizes the blessing that is Mary and her commitment to God's ministry. And unlike Elizabeth, my gut feelings don't often end with me offering blessings to others. But what if they did? What if those moments when we feel the Holy Spirit moving, we acknowledge the presence of God and bless those around us? Maybe they aren't blessings of words, but rather blessings of gifts or actions. And I think this might have been what my grandfather was doing all along. I was preoccupied with the power of his gut feeling to notice the blessings he was sharing with his loved ones. But when he bought that family ranch, he took a huge financial risk that resulted in the blessing of countless family memories and time spent together. And his gut feeling to show up early blessed me with the ability to be ready for most things and be alert to the world around me. 
and most importantly, to always be on time. And when he sold the boat trailer for fresh fish, he blessed our family with countless meals and stories that still bring about laughter around tables today. And when he insisted on buying my grandmother a new car and finishing up projects around the house and even that very last run for batteries to Walmart, he blessed us with his peace and care and protection even after his death. So friends, there is more to learn from the story of Elizabeth and Mary. Possibly listening to your gut, paying attention to the emotions welling up inside of you, and feeling the Holy Spirit move is just step one. Step two is acknowledging God in the story, no matter how wild it may seem. And then the final step is to bless those around us. Bless those around you and then continue the cycle of feeling the Holy Spirit move within you. We know what happens after this moment in scripture. We know the, the future that's held by these two mothers. Because Mary and Elizabeth do not hide their story. They do not keep quiet about the ways in which God is calling them to live. They share their story, they celebrate the movement of God, and they bless those around them. For generations and thousands of years, the stories of these two women have changed the world in ways probably bigger than they could have ever imagined. We know that Mary listens to her gut and follows the call of God placed on her innermost being. Mary and follows the instructions of angels and brings a baby into the world who will change everything. And we acknowledge the humble beginnings of Christ's birth in a manger, but I think it's just as important to acknowledge the life-giving work that Mary does in that same manger. The spirit-filled work that Elizabeth shares with the birth of her son. These women trust their gut because they trust their God and their actions become blessings to us all and a story we return to year after year. We're going to begin, or we're going to end the sermon the same way we started. One last time, let's take a deep breath together. Place your hands on your stomach and breathe in and out. Feel the potential in that space. Feel the Holy Spirit moving in your belly. Feel the call to bless those around you because that is a gut feeling we can trust. You might give birth to a human who changes the world. You might find the words to inspire someone to share their testimony. And you might feel the urge to feed God's people so their stomachs never feel empty. Your gut might encourage you to love people who are pushed to the margins. And your gut feelings might move you to tears for those in war and experiencing bloodshed. Your gut feeling might move you to take bold actions against injustice in this world. And your gut feeling might simply be the calmness of the Holy Spirit saying, blessed is she who believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. My gut tells me that your life is a blessing to those around you. My gut tells me this congregation continues to be a blessing to this community and beyond. Your willingness to lean into the call of God is a blessing for those who hear your story. So listen to your gut, pay attention to the center of your being, and know that the Holy Spirit is at work in you. Amen.
Apostles' Creed. This creed has been used by Christians for since the eighth century. Please join me in answering the age-old question. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Join me as we ask God to be with us as we share our needs for his intercession in our lives. Dear Lord, it is hard for some of us to watch the news every day. There are things happening that make us worried, like the environment deteriorating because of the things that we are doing to it, and war, school shootings, and violence filling our world. Kids and teens study endlessly for tests and exams while adults deal with the changes and challenges of life. Please help us be patient, compassionate, and solve problems. Please help our church stay connected and for everyone to stay together. Amen. This is the time we are asked to share what we have been given so that, through us, others may receive and know God's grace. In addition, we are accepting the birthday offering, one of two Presbyterian women offerings. The birthday offering continues to be used in the United States and around the world to bring hope and improve the lives of women and children. Ushers, please come forward.
So friends, go forth with hearts that move our bodies to express a love that knows no bounds. Display the kindness of God's care for all. May your experience have honor and dignity. May your dreams be realized. May you feel the power of your body to guide your choices. Blessings to you and our bodies joined together to live out justice realized. And you bless with all the love in the world, joining others in hope and endless possibilities. Go in peace. Thank you.